coming up on the wrap this week. <laughs> oh, boy. We select combined perfect for theme from the Rugby Championship Nations. Oh, I just enjoy the way he plays. Eh? Just... Seems like the hardest man to put down in world rugby. Ben Smith drops in to tell us what he's made of the All Black so far. And in Challenge Hugo, I'll try to recreate a classic Dan Carter <laughs> drop so goal with a fist. <laughs> Hello and good morning. World Rugby have actually promised me that I will film one of these in the summer when the sun is out. Well, welcome to England. And after a brief delay due to COVID, the Rugby Championship is back this weekend. So we're very much looking forward to that as well as the top 14 and one man who's going to be featuring both of those competitions, just not this weekend, is Cheslin Colby. Massive news. He's left to lose after winning the Heineken Champions Cup as well as the top 14. And he's going to Toulon. But there's always some brilliant rugby played somewhere on the planet and that place was in Tokyo during the Paralympics. The congratulations to Great Britain who won gold in the wheelchair rugby final taking on USA. Phenomenal match. If you've not watched it, if you've not got into it, get into it. It's as fierce and fast and physical as what we normally see out on pitches like this. So last week on The Wrap we're talking about some of the greatest All Blacks of all time. We had one of them on our show because that's just what we do. Sean Fitzpatrick, of course, the former All Black captain, and he was talking us through the favourite All Blacks he played with or got to watch. So we've had loads of comments and suggestions in from you, the fans. So I'm now going to pick out the top five most common names given. Number one, Richie McCaw. Not many players ever get to go back to back in World Cups, and that's what this legend did. Mar Nonu. Well, he's over 110 kg. He is harder to tackle than a bowling ball. That guy, that combination of him and another man we had on the wrap last week, Conrad Smith, was just incredible. Number three, Jonah Lomu, rugby's first ever superstar. My idol growing up, an incredible player. There's never ever been anyone like him since. I'm not sure you could ever replicate the type of man and impact that he had on our game. Number four, Aaron Smith, probably one of the best passes of the ball out there. A complete number nine and a number nine that I think lots of young kids today model themselves on. And at number five, Christian Cullen, that when he got the ball in his hands, he was able to glide and slalom through defenders. A true joy to watch. They're the top five as picked by you, the fans. I tell you what, the All Blacks, their lineage, their history and their prestige of their players is truly something very, very special. So our first guest on The Wrap this week is a person that got a lot of love as well as a lot of nominations. He's a World Cup winner, a brilliant counter-attacking fullback. He's an all-black legend. Of course, it's Ben Smith, so let me give him a call. Uh, ben, great to see you. Um, how's things? All, all good at the moment? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, no, all good. We, uh, we're actually just in lockdown at the moment in New Zealand, but hopefully we'll get un under control uh, this COVID uh, in the next week or two. But uh, yeah, got two kids that I'm trying to control at home, so she's full noise. I know this has probably been asked a million times over the last 18 months, but what's tougher, lockdown for a couple of weeks with two kids or playing against South Africa in South Africa at altitude? Oh, it's two kids in the day and my wife's 32 weeks pregnant, so oh, I've, got, I've, got, I've got her that's uncomfortable too, so it's the yeah, triple threat. <laughs> my word, my word. Okay, we'll keep it, we'll just keep it strictly to rugby in that case then. I mean, it's been exceptional some of the rugby the All Blacks have played in um, the last couple of test matches. Are you expecting more of the same? Yeah, oh, I think uh, it'll be interesting for the All Blacks because they've obviously left uh, guys like Richie Moanga, Aaron Smith um, uh, behind, Sam Whitelock. So it'll uh, be an interesting game, this, this All Blacks uh, Aussie game in the weekend and Oh, I'm looking forward to watching, yeah. Yeah, it should be really good. You mentioned some key players that have been left behind, which gives an opportunity to Australia, um, but they've got to close that gap, which seemed really significant in the in the last Test match. Do you think they can do enough to bridge that gap and, and potentially get a W? Oh, I think, you know, they started actually pretty well in both those games in the Bledders, though, and then oh, I think the way that uh, the All Blacks asserted pressure with their defence and uh, I think a couple of times Aussie tried to throw uh, long balls out to the edge and uh, the All Blacks managed to pick a couple of those off and, and score a few tries and then they got momentum and then they were unstoppable from there. But 
the Aussies were actually pretty good at the start of the game. I think like with guys like McDermott, uh, if he can run from nine and and they can keep the ball alive and, and sort of get him behind us, um, we looked a wee bit vulnerable around that sort of heart defence. So it'll be interesting uh, to see Aussie. I'm sure they'll fought, be fired up to play back at home. It'll be a, um, a, a massive contest. Okay, cool. We've now got to pick our combined Rugby Championship 15, but I want to know from you what players absolutely have got to make it into that team. Um, so yeah, I had Aaron Smith. I just think the way he's playing, uh, he's got a lock in nine for me. Uh, obviously, uh, McDermott's uh, right up there, but for me, uh, Aaron Smith, uh, the way that he's uh, you know directing the All Blacks at the moment and and how he's having a big influence on the game, uh, he's someone that for me he's got to be in there. Uh, and I, was, I also uh, had Michael Hooper. I just thought the way that, even though it was in a losing effort um, for the Wallabies, like I thought he was just everywhere in that yeah. last bit of the Cup game. And I think he's going to be uh, instrumental as to how the Wallabies go moving forward in the Rugby Championship. So I, I'd have him there. Uh, for me, I thought Artie Severs, uh, you know, he had a, a bit of an injury in Super Rugby and he's really bounced back from that. And, you saw in the last bit of a cup game, you know, how, how dangerous he was, scored a try. Um, just the physicality within his game and when he ball carried or defensively, he was uh, he was he was enormous. And then we had Cheston Colby. Oh, I just enjoy the way he plays. Eh? He just, uh, for a small man, he knows uh, his strengths and he just sticks to them. And, and I think that's why you turn your tally on uh, to watch those kind of games is to see those kind of players. Certainly is. Ben, thank you so much for joining us. All the very best of luck with lockdown the next couple of weeks and to your wife who's expecting. Um, yeah, take care and enjoy the game this weekend. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my wife might need it. A bit more luck than me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Appreciate your time. Cheers, mate. See ya. <laughs> Well, thanks, Ben, for starting us off with your selection. So to fill the rest of this combined team out, it's time to cross the Tasman and get in touch with a former Wallaby captain, James Hall. Yeah, how's things, mate? All right? Good, mate. Good, thanks. How are you going? Yeah, not too bad. We've got some work to do. We've got to select a combined 15 from the Rugby Championship, starting from number one. And, mate, there's some absolute powerhouses. Where are you leaning towards? Yeah, I'm going to be a bit, little bit biased. With this. I think James Slipper, I think in the, in the two tests against the All Blacks. I think he's been the one that's given them as much problems around, particularly at scrum time, but around the park. Well, he's a very good mate of mine, so I'm probably being a little bit biased. But, <laughs> okay. um, um, who's partner him at Hooker? Umbanumbi has been sensational. Cody Taylor, he's been outstanding in the last two Bledisloes. I think he's sort of outplayed, you know, but definitely both Australian hookers that have played along. And Mbombi, as you said, in the in the Lions series was, was you know, quite immense. So, I mean, it's sort of a flip of the coin, sort of. I'll go, I'll go Cody Taylor. Okay, boom, Cody Taylor, probably score a hat trick as well. That's what he does. Yeah. Uh, okay, Ty Ted. In Carney or uh, or the Tong and Thor is probably the two I'll go for. Nice. I mean, he hasn't been starting, but he uh, but he but he's been uh, he's been immense when every time he comes off the bench. So there, there's a there's a bit of a curveball. So pick, you can pick one, Oaks. You pick oh, one. Oh no, as if you get an ex winger to pick a tight head, but I'm gonna <laughs> pick uh, Nia Carney. I thought he was immense on the Lions tour. And anyone that celebrates winning a scrum penalty by sticking their tongue out, like I'm all over it. The engine room, mate, this is your house, your domain at four. I think it's either between Exabeth and Retallick. I think there was a few questions over Brody coming back from Japan, but I, th I think he answered that in the second Bledisloe. I thought he was immense, uh, outplayed definitely both Australian locks. So I'll probably go with him. I think he's picked up where he left off. Left off. Okay, no arguments for me. Number five. Sam Whitelock. I mean, he just keeps getting better and better. I think he's yeah. 120 on tests now. But again, Lude in the, in the Lions series, you know, was probably one of their, their form players and he's like the baby face assassin. So to keep it uh, to keep it fair, we'll, we'll go one from each. So we'll go Lou Diaga as the, as the number five. He could easily slip into number six as well, which leads us yeah. into our back row. Mate, this is fearsome. I think when you look, Khaleesi, obviously, he, he's been good. I think he's, you know, the impact that he has for the team that when he plays in it. Yuan, he's probably not been where he's at. I think Matera, um, you know, we've seen how good he can be. I'm, I'm interested to see how he goes against the Kiwis. But yeah, I think we'll go Pablo Macera as our uh, as our number six. Yeah, spot on there. Okay, ten. Uh, I, I, I mean, yeah, it's a bit like that, isn't it? I, 
Moana. I just think he's been again partner partnering Aaron Smith. He they've probably been the difference against Australia in the in the two tests when when you look at the rugby championship. So I'd probably say that yeah, Richie Moana. Yeah, agreed with that. Left wing, a lot of power. So a lot of power yeah. on that left wing. Mapimpi's a, a genuine finisher. Ioane's got true gas. I'm going to go with Marika just purely because I think he's every time he touches the ball. He's breaking at least one tackle. He seems like the hardest man to put down in world rugby, and he goes looking for the ball. You know, is it nothing better than a forward when you see a winger putting his hand up for heavy carries off, off nine, and he just goes looking for the pill. And every time he gets the ball, something happens. Yeah, he's a real problem, a real handful. Right yeah. at twelve, I think we'll go with the South African for this one, Damien Delandi. I think he's just a real powerhouse. He's just a solid rock there for South Africa and gives them that that front football. We know that they uh, they feed off. At 13, who's partnering Delande? It's a, it's an all South African centre combination for me. I think he, you know, 13 is a, a tough position, but I think with um, you know, I'm really, really impressed. So I'm, yeah, he's definitely our, our number 13. Um, at 15, fullback. I've seen a bit more of Damien McKenzie. I think he gives you a, another kicking option as well uh, as a fullback, and yeah, slip into first receiver if, if Richie goes goes down and you know when you've got the two bigger centers there I think it's a nice balance to your back line if you're looking at that way I'm probably getting a bit too technical here rather should just be picking guys that I like to watch play. <laughs> yeah mate that's a phenomenal side my thanks to you as well as Ben Smith earlier on for selecting that combined rugby championship 15 it's time for you to go back sun yourself probably a little bit more and look forward yeah. to the game this weekend Sounds good. Thanks, Hugh. Thanks for having us, mate. Legend. Cheers, mate. So it's Challenge Hugo time this week. Let's have a look at what World Rugby have got in store for me. Thank you, Tom. Let's have a look at this. All revealed in this lovely bit of paper. Here we go. Aha, it's the kicking one. Very good. Good morning, Hugo. And as we're talking about the Southern Hemisphere nations this week, your challenge is to recreate a classic band car to drop golf. Carter, it is over! It's 30 yards out, but... I'll have to kick it. Of course. Why would you make it easy? Okay. Should we just give it a go? Look at the size of it. For World Cup glory. <laughs> it's so heavy. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to give this one more attempt. I'm not sure what's going to go through that post first. This ball or my hamstring. Oh, it was better. But still about 10, 15 yards short. There we are. Challenge you go this week. I'm going to have to take an L on that one. There is only one Dan Carter. <laughs> 